Hi, I'm Jeff Demand. I'm the host of an exciting, cool new show called Meet the Merchants. We'll be traveling all over Arizona, meeting the people behind businesses and industry that's vital to Arizona's economy. Join me right here on AZTV. Here at Chaton, we're launching a project called The Recording Artist. And if it takes off, then soon we plan to be paying bands to record instead of charging them. That's right. You could have a chance to get paid to record in the nicest studio in Phoenix. You got to admit, that's a whole lot better than paying $25 an hour to track at somebody's house or $95 an hour to track at one of our competitors. To learn more, visit therecordingartist.com. I want to be your Hi, I'm Dick Wagner, and you're watching the Arizona Music Show. Rock on. Describe Dick Wagner to someone who had no idea who he was. Um, I, I think I'd start by asking them questions. For example, do you know what rock and roll is? Do you know what rock and roll superstars are like? Um, if you don't know those things, then you need to read a few books about a few characters before we even start talking about Dick. The night was clear and the moon was yellow and the leaves came tumbling down. Influencing uh, me as a, a rock guitarist, and I think what uh, once in a while I'll put on uh, Alice Cooper's "Cold Ethel," and that guitar, the guitar licks that he does in that song are amazing. really deserves a lot more notoriety and uh, 
legendary status than, than he's known for. And I think he, he actually deserves a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He just really did some amazing work in his life. And once in a while, I'll put on Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare, just to hear the guitar. It's so creative and so original. And uh, that album would not be that album without Dick Wagner. That album would not have existed. And even if it, the, some of the ideas would have been there, they would not have been half as good without Dick Wagner's influence and guitar sound. <laughs> going through all this period of time of not being able to play at all I mean literally it after my heart attack and I, my arm was paralyzed and I couldn't even pick up a guitar much less play it and because I discovered in a while that I had hydrocephalus at the same time which threw my balance off and threw off my timing so I would try to play guitar and I could not find the beat I mean I couldn't you know, that internal pulse that keeps you in a pocket. I couldn't find it, and I couldn't get... It made me stumble all the time, and it was just crazy. I thought I'd never play again. And uh, then after my um, being brought back from the heart attack, and then the brain surgery, which really straightened me out. I mean, all of a sudden, I, I was stopped falling, and I stopped... It was it was amazing to me because now I could pick up a guitar and I could play a few things that was very rusty. You know, I couldn't really play much, but I knew that I was going to be able to play again. And it would just take some determination, you know. And uh, so that's what I did. Then I found I I could play a little bit, and somehow my sense of the pocket and stuff was back. And uh, so like I said, I, th I, I knew I was going to be able to play again, but it was a matter of how, how well and how soon. And uh, just by going at it and setting that goal, you know, playing live, I knew I had to play live again, so I went ahead and booked some dates. And I did have to set them back from September to November, but I went out in November, and when I got arrived in Detroit, I didn't know for sure if I was going to be able to play because I hadn't played with a band or anything really 
And the first day I was there, I had to do that recording session for that for my that song Motor City Music. Mm -hmm. So there I was. just turned out great. I couldn't believe it myself. I met Dick Wagner about seven years ago when he came to town to uh, produce a record for a local artist and um, we hit it off right away. Between the two of us we have very very similar sensibilities about music production, music style and melody. He and I both have tremendous reverence for the song and that's where it starts. And since I come from the musician side and not from the engineer side, even though I'm an engineer, to me, the preamp is important, but not nearly as important as the song, not nearly as important as the performance. A lot of great records that I remember growing up listening to were recorded on crap gear, but they still make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. So for me and for Dick, the focus has never been on the gear. The gear has to be good enough and quality and not be in the way. But from an engineering point of view, that's the end of the process. It's about the songs. So production comes back to getting the right players and having the right parts on the right material. So as soon as we did one record together, Dick you know, looked at me and he was like, you know what, I'm never going to do another record without you. And I was like, cool, I like making records with you. And uh, over the years we've done a number of projects together, and it looks like this summer we may even, uh, be working on his next solo record, which would be a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to sign some posters. Hey, what's the guy's name in Russia? Right now, we're in the middle of mixing tracks that I cut in Italy over the last two, three weeks, and I brought them here to Otto. So Otto and I work together so well, and he's such a genius at what he does, um, that we sit here and mix the stuff. You know, I, I didn't want to trust mixing it over there, so I booked the time with Otto here before I even went to Italy, knowing that uh, I was going to come back here and do this. And so that's why I'm here, and right in the middle of mixing the songs that I did with uh, the Mugshots, a group from Italy. And it's just sounding phenomenal, and I'm very, very happy. So that, that's what I'm doing now here with Otto. You know, there's a lot more that I'd like to do, and we probably will do in the future, you know, including, you know, doing my own album.
<laughs> Did you get that? People, hello, baby, you're a rich man. <laughs> you're not more a rich. No, I'm no more a rich man. I sold it all. Good morning, sir. How are you? Okay, I'm Miki from the Magshots, an Italian band. I come from Brescia, a city near Milano, between Milano and Verona. And I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona, at the Chaton Studios by uh, Otto Daniolo. Uh, he's Italian too, I guess, from the name. And I'm working with uh, Dear Otto and uh, Dick Wagner, which is our uh, new producer, the new producer for the Mugshots. He produced our last release. And uh, it's such an emotion for me because I grew up with uh, Dick Wagner's music when I was a kid. And I got in touch with him on Facebook. It was uh, so strange getting in touch with him. He just got out of the hospital, he liked our music and then we started co-writing songs together. He came over to Brescia and uh, we recorded some tracks and now we are mixing them and uh, finish the production here in uh, Phoenix, uh, Arizona. When I first uh, asked for friendship uh, to Dick, uh, he didn't hit me back and I said, okay, he's too big for me, I'll never get in touch with him. Uh, instead, he was at the hospital, so he could not get in touch with me. But a few hours uh, after being released, I uh, got in touch with him on the Facebook chat and I said, uh, uh, hugs from Italy. And he said, I really need them. And then we started chatting, I sent him the music. And I was so, so emotional, you know, it was such a strong emotion. I started like pacing around the house for an hour and breathing and telling myself, oh my God, I, I just spoke with Dick Wagner. He likes our music and we're gonna do things together. And that was amazing. I just called my girlfriend and said, oh, you cannot imagine who I was talking with like a few minutes ago. It's Dick Wagner, you know, the guy from Alice Cooper and Lou Reed and all of this amazing stuff that uh, helped me growing up with uh, good music. What was it like having uh, Dick live uh, in your town for two weeks? <laughs> the album? It was like a blast. It was uh, so, so fun. He, he had a lot of gelato, Italian gelato, he liked it so much. And we recorded uh, five amazing tracks. The three of them are co-written by myself and Dick Wagner. Then there is Under My Skin, which is an unused Alice Cooper track by Dick Wagner. It, uh, now it's, it became like a, a mugshots track. And then there is a cover of this masterpiece by Dick Wagner and Alice Cooper, which is called Pass the Gun Around, uh, released back in 1983 on the Dada album produced by Bob Ezrin and uh, it was written by Dick Wagner and Alice Cooper but it's very very um, underrated so we decided to give this amazing song a chance. Sonny wakes up in the morning feeling kind of sick Needs a little stoli vodka Needs it really quick Sees a little blood run from his eyes Feels a little hotel paralyzed That's the get around Give everyone a shot, give everyone a shot to better That's the get around I throw me in the low career, but let me fall You sound like Alice on that line. <laughs> Which one? And, uh, Let me float away. Right before that. Da, 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 da. And what's Let's the lyric? Around. Give everyone a shot. Yeah. yeah. Right in there. <laughs> so, yeah. So he wakes up in the morning feeling kind of sick. Needs a little stoly vodka. Needs it really quick. Oh. Sees a little blood run from his eyes. Feels a little hotel. 
first met Dick and I started to talk with him and personally I mean when we met in Brescia I thought oh my god this is amazing this is a humble guy he's uh, so wise uh, despite all <laughs> of what is done in his whole life you can read it on his book uh, uh, not only women bleed he was quite a, a vicious guy, while well, now he's so straight, he's so cool and uh, uh, it's such an emotion for me uh, dealing with him and uh, there's some love between uh, me and Dick now and we, we got along uh, really nice together and uh, he helped us uh, out a lot with uh, writing the music and uh, arranging the music. Not only this, we had some big fun spending nights together and drinking and eating and stuff like that, hanging around. <laughs> Great. We are doing a little piano overdub on the end of the track. The producer, the maestro, Dick Wagner, has decided that it needs a bouncing right in piano through this last yeah. large part of the song. Are you ready to roll? Let's take a shot at it. That was good. Is that good? Yeah, maybe I hear it back. Yeah, I'll come in there and listen. Okay. Okay, well, there you go. I'll play you a little piece of that ending. That I sing. We're sitting with Dick Wagner, guitar legend, and his manager Susie, and uh, we're discussing his book, Not Only Women Bleed, which he just wrote, what, this year, I guess? You I finished it this year, yeah. It's an e-book, you know, so you have to be willing to explore some technology, but it's uh, it's really easy, so. Um, so you can only find it online? It's not like, it's on Amazon.com, and uh, you can download a free Kindle for PCs. If you only have a computer at home, you download, it's free, the Kindle the, for PCs. And then you buy the book, $9.99. Not, not expensive, folks. Uh, $9.99, and when you download that, it comes right up on the Kindle reader. What made you decide to uh, write, write this book? The truth is that I was starting to write some like short stories and things, and I was enjoying writing, and and I've always enjoyed writing songs. So, um, so I started writing down some of these little vignettes, um, just a few, you know. I just and then one day I realized that I was on my way to writing a book, 
I didn't make a conscious decision to write a book. I just kind of drifted into it. And then, uh, you know, I got, so I had so many stories and I had written them all and I thought they were pretty good. And I thought the book was finished. And I went to Susie and I said, read this. And she said, it's really great, but it's not long enough. <laughs> So, Dick, in your book, you have a chapter about your uh, Australian roadie, John Peacock. Mm, uh-huh. Yeah, he, I, uh, I remember John. Yep. Tell us about tell us about John Peacock. He had the, I don't know if it was a, a, a blessing or a curse, of looking almost identical to Alice Cooper. They, they look so much alike, it's amazing. He worked for us. He was on the Alice Cooper tour. So... Uh, we would go into bars and stuff after the gigs and, you know, hang out with the locals and they'd mistake him for Alice, you know. They'd all come up and want his autograph and da 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 Anyway, so there was a time when Alice was wanting to leave the tour because he was not feeling well. You know, he was, a, he was an alcoholic at the time and um, it was getting to him really bad and he felt like he had to go home and so he didn't want to continue on the tour and there were still like five cities to play so the idea came up you know from the high, higher levels I won't say the highest but I'll say the higher levels of the management and production team they wanted to take advantage of John Peacock's similarity to Alice Cooper and let Alice go home and have John Peacock go up on stage and kind of stay backstage, not real close up front, um, and l like lip sync the songs. And they wanted me to sing the songs from backstage with them, you know, put a mic in front of me and just be singing the songs. And, you know, I, I said, you guys are insane. I said, I'm not going to do this. If I did it, I would be contributing to ruining Alice Cooper's life. Because, you know, inevitably the, the truth would come out about these shows and right. that it wasn't Alice Cooper, it was a fake. I mean, his fans would be incensed and, you know, I think it would do great, harmful, I mean, a lot of damage to his career. And I refused to do it.